Welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed. I hope you guys are doing alright and may you stay blessed. So, today I'm going to be reacting to the beginning of the Joe's arrival has started. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. We live therefore in a time that is paving the way for the coming of this person called a dajjal A dajjal literally means the liar, the deceiver. And this deceiver cannot deceive people so perfectly until a road or an environment has been prepared for his coming. He can't just go in like that. It has to be prepared. Just like the road for atheism was prepared in the 17th century when the Church of Christ fell. People didn't, you know, trust the church anymore. So people like Darwin, Charles Darwin, and other phys um, uh, um, physicians and theorists, they came up to say there's no God. And suddenly now it's atheism. Just like they paved the way for homosexuality to be accepted. When you don't believe in God, you don't believe in a soul, you're just like an animal. So they said, well, you know, animals are gay as well. We've seen monkeys do it like that. So why don't we just be like them? They pave the way. They set the pace. And then all these other catastrophes come along. A Dajjal requires that the environment has to be set up for him. And with all this Dajjal, this era of deception we live in today, you look at the media and you don't know what to believe anymore. You trust Al Jazeera, then the next day you see something, you think, oh my God, but can I really trust them? You trust another uh, media site, and then the next day something kills you. And where do you go? Media is the most powerful pull tool today that has ever existed. The most powerful. And we do not live in a world of wars with, with weapons anymore. It is a war of ideology and media. Media. Deception upon deception upon deception. For Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us What will you do when Iraq is denied its currency? What will be your state and what will you do when a sham when its currency is denied? And what will you do when Egypt its currency will be denied? And you return to where you began in the first place. What does this mean? When Iraq is denied its currency, when a country falls, its currency falls as well, doesn't it? And you no longer deal with its currency. Another currency replaces it. A Rasul Sallallahu or the narrator of this hadith, the Rasul Sallallahu was asked, how will it fall? And he said, by foreign intervention. Foreign intervention. Al-Ajam. So Iraq's currency will fall by the invasion and another currency will replace it. Then, after that, he placed it in sequence. A sham's currency will be denied. So a sham as a nation will fall. Again, another currency will replace soon and it has to be by a foreign intervention. Currently, we see only one part of it inside. It's a bigger picture than what you think. Yes, this is one part of it. Yes, there are oppressors. There is an oppressor in there. Yes, there are oppressors. Yes, it is there. However, it is all a... It is one of the rocks, one of the plots within the bigger plan. Then Rasul Sallallahu said, After Asham, he mentioned Misr, Egypt. You think it's over for Egypt right now? According to this hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim, something else is coming up. When a currency of a nation falls, it means that the country itself falls and there is an invasion. As Rasul Sallallahu mentioned over here. It's not happened to Egypt yet. But this is, seems like the sequence that Rasul Sallallahu is informing us about it. He also said another narration, this hadith by Abu Huraira, Tuntahaku dhummat, tuntahaku dhimmat Allahi wa dhimmat 
What does this mean? Allah, meaning the Romans or the non-Muslims who used to exist at the time of Islam, when Islam ruled for more than a thousand years, they were non-Muslims who lived in, in the lands of Islam and they were called Dhummis, meaning the ones who are entrusted to us. They lived in our lands and we gave them the right to live in peace and they had to pay something in return for our protection of them. But not the Muslims. Muslims pay zakat. They had to pay this thing called jizya, which means that we'll protect you, provide you. Today they say tax. We call it jizya for the non-Muslims who live among us. Only this is a type of agreement. When this, he said, the people who used to do this before, they will no longer do it anymore, meaning they will be overpowering you. And these are the types of people who will invade you. Now this is, these are the facts and we see it today. What has happened to Iraq is not something that anyone can deny. And what is now happening in a sham is both, both intervention within and outside. And it is yet to come. A sham, however, is totally different to the rest of the world. It is different to Iraq. It is different to Egypt. It is different to everything. A sham means Lebanon, Syria, parts of Jordan, Palestine. They call it today Israel. I'll call Israeli territories are in there. Palestine and parts of Turkey. This was a sham. And you know when after World War I what happened? They divided a sham. They concentrated on a sham to divide it into different states. Each one with a flag. And they turned the Arabs and Turks against each other because we were once one nation. It was called the last Khilafah al Uthmaniya Because we became materialistic and our pride of lineage and our pride of nationalism and our pride of racism crept into us. This was the best way to plot and plan to break us apart. Until today, look at us in misery. For Rasul said, Leave it alone, for it is a stinking carcass. It cannot bring anything, anything but misery, unhappiness, and stench. This is what's happening to us today. Our Rasul said, You will also get into a war with the Jews. This type of war that we are in is not like any war you've ever seen before. We are now currently in there. Who are we? Meaning mostly the Arab lands. For Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in Musnad Ahmad, he said, you will fight the Jews, meaning the Zionists who are occupying Israel now, uh, Palestine is Israel. عَلَىٰ نَهْرٍ فِي الْأُرْدُنْ أَنْتُمْ شَرْقِيُّهُ وَهُمْ غَرْبِيُّهُ At the cross or the section of a river that is in Jordan, you will be on its east and they will be on its west bank. That is today. The narrator of this hadith says, Wallahi, I did not know where Jordan is. In those days, there's no such thing as Jordan. No one knew Jordan. It was always called Sham. Remember? After World War I, it became, or just before that, it became Jordan. The name came out later. Later, later. Hundreds of years after the Prophet ﷺ. How did the Prophet ﷺ know this? Because he's a messenger of Allah. وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ He doesn't speak out of his own desires. Except from... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, you will fight them, be in battle with them at that river that is in Jordan, which divides you from the west. They'll be on the west, you'll be on the east. And there is a river there that has dried out a few years ago. Subhanallah. So the Arabs are on one side and the Jews are on the other, occupying Palestinian land. In fact, the Jews believe that there will be Jesus Christ who will come out very soon. And the Christians believe that Jesus Christ will come again. But the Christians also believe in an Antichrist. We believe in the Dajjal. We don't call him Antichrist. Yes, he will be against Christ or Christ will be against him. Salam. But a Dajjal literally means the one-eyed, the liar, the deceiver. Al-Masih al-Dajjal. And Rasul Sallallahu gave us descriptions about him. He is a person. He is a person. But as I said, the things that are happening now is a welcoming to, for his coming. When he comes out, the Jews are waiting for the Messiah to come. They believe the ancient Jesus, the real Jesus, he was an imposter, he was a false Messiah. This is in their Torah now, now, which they have played around with. So they're still waiting for the Messiah. But they say the Messiah will not come out until the Temple of Solomon is rebuilt. They have to rebuild it. And the state of Israel becomes established. And the word of God, meaning the religion of the Israelites, of the Torah, is practiced throughout the world. That's what they said in the Torah. 
then the Messiah will come out. That's when the Messiah will come out. The Christians, they say, there will be an Antichrist, who is the Dajjal, and then Christ will come out again. So they're very close to the Muslims. But Rasul Sallallahu stood up and he said, I will tell you, every prophet that came to his people who told him something about the Dajjal, but I will tell you something about him that no other prophet has ever told his people. And he began to describe so much about his features. You can read about it in Sahih Muslim or Sahih Bukhari. There's so much description about him for the lack of time now. But this is what he said. He said, there hasn't come an affliction, a trial greater from the time of Adam, this hadith in Sahih Muslim, from the time of Adam until the end of time, a trial more vicious, more harsha, more deceiving, more upon you than the fitna of Dajjal. If he comes out at a time when I am with you, he is released when I am with you, then I will be the guardian to protect you from it. I take it upon me. Allahu Akbar. This is from his mercy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his care for his ummah. He said, Ana kafifu. I will take him on other than you. Even the Rasul sallallahu cannot kill him. Only Jesus alayhi sallam can kill him. He said, but if he comes out after my time, then every person is responsible for themselves. And he said, be careful, for he will deceive you. When he comes out, it will be very difficult to stand your ground. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us the believers will unknow him from three letters on his forehead, kafir or kufr. And the rest of the world will follow him. The weak believers will follow him. And he will not be able to enter Mecca or Medina. And then Isa alayhi salam will destroy him. This will happen in Palestine. And the Mahdi will rise in Asham, in Syria, in Damascus. And there will be a great war between the Romans, the Europeans of today, 80 flags against the Muslim nation by itself in Asham. It is going to happen soon. After Egypt loses its currency, Al Mahdi will come out. So these are only the beginning of the beginning of what is yet to come brothers and sisters the result of it well over time the Muslims left the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and became materialistic it's as simple as that materialistic competing with materialism and selfless selfishness thinking about ourselves and putting our deen in our hands and our world on our heads so that if the hat on our heads gets out of place, which is our dunya, we put what is in our hands on the floor, which is our deen, in order to fix our dunya. If the dunya is fixed, I'll grab the deen. If the dunya is wrecked, I'll wait. I don't have to practice the deen right now. This is the metaphor I give you. Very interesting. Um, why does it have to be Egypt to lose its currency for the Madi to come out? And then I was just thinking to myself, when you think of foreign aid, um, foreign aid comes in as something that's quite sugar-coated. You're thinking, yes, we need this. Yes, this is going to help us. Yes, this is going to help us develop the country. This is going to, um, what can I say? like lead us further than we are right now but i feel like to some extent foreign intervention itself is a distraction look at what happens or look at what has happened in history so far what has foreign aid done it's doing harm by creating all these groups that we don't need that end up creating havoc in certain areas of the world not just middle east in many other parts of the world as well which is why can't we just learn to solve things without foreign aid we've been taught that we need foreign aid i don't think we need it i feel like they create more distraction um 
I wish we could solve things ourselves without intervention from other people because um, Lord knows when something goes down in their country, we don't have Zambia rushing over to the other side to intervene or in the name of um, some sort of law the law that's only followed when it's the other way around when it's these countries that are um called developing countries uh developing poor countries those that are considered in that um category otherwise let me know what you guys think about this video and the message that it had um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe